All right, let's get started. Um, the idea here is to factor out a common factor. And um, you may not see it, but let's take a look at a simpler example like 5x plus 5. Uh, well, both of these terms, this one and this one, have a 5 in common that we can factor out. Well, the same thing is true here. We have a, a term here and this term here. Both of these terms have a factor of x plus 1 in common. So we can factor out that x plus 3. I think, I think I said x plus 1 just a second ago. They have a factor of x plus 3 in common. We can factor that out just like we factored the 5 out in this case. So if we factor out that x plus 3, then we're left with x plus 1 just like this was. This is a factor of x plus 3. This has a factor of x plus 3, we factor it out, and we're left with x plus 1. If we were to take this whole thing and distribute it back into the parentheses, we would just get back to here. Right? We just get uh, x plus 3 times x. And I write it doesn't really matter the order. I could put x plus 3 before x or vice versa. And then x plus 3 times 1 means we're going to be adding x plus 3. And we can put parentheses around that, and there we go. So. Um, that's key to a, a approach to factoring called factor by grouping. Okay. So uh, let's look at this guy here. Uh, this looks almost uh, like identical to the to previous example, except for this factor here and this factor are not quite the same as they were back here. Back here they were exactly the same. They were x plus 3 and x plus 3. But this one, they're not exactly the same. Um, let's say we took 13 times z minus 6. Okay, If this were z minus 6, like if this was 4z squared times z minus 6, then they would be identical. Okay. Um, well, can we make that happen? Um, yeah, if we... All right, sorry for that. Um, we can do that. Let's, let's just... Uh, let's make this positive and see what would happen. Um, well, let me, let me phrase it differently. Let's take a negative out of the parentheses. Okay, here, let's, let's take it over here. Let's look at 6 minus z. What if I made this negative out in front, and then uh, if I distribute this negative to something, I need to get this 6, so I'll make that a negative 6. I need to distribute this something to get negative z, so I'll make that a positive z. Okay. If I distribute this negative, it's the exact same thing. So with a negative on the outside, we can write negative z minus 6. We'll just change the order of these guys. So we bring out the negative. Okay, negative 1 times negative 4z, we wind up with plus 4z squared. And now, z minus 6 and z minus 6 are common factors. z minus 6 uh, times 13 plus 4z squared. And there we go. It's been factored. The next one. All right, so. This is where I was talking about factor by grouping. So we want to take this and turn it into something like this, where we have a common factor that we can take out. Um, let's see. We'll group these two together and these two together. And in each group, we'll say, what do they have in common? So what do these have in common? They have a y squared in common. Right, we should be able to do that. If we distribute the y squared into the y, we'll have y to the third. y squared times negative 7 is negative 7y squared. Okay, then we look at these two and say, what do they have in common? These have in common a 2. And this would be y minus 7. And now look what we did. Just so happens these are identical. So those factor out as well. We factor out the y minus 7, um, just like we would any other factor. Uh, we factor out that common factor and uh, write what's left in this parentheses so that if we were to distribute the y minus 7 to the y squared, we would get y squared times y minus 7. And 
distribute it to this one. This would be 2 times y minus 7. That's what we have here. We would distribute the y squared into 2, and we get back to the original. So there we are. It's factored. That's the factored form. Okay, same thing here. We're going to group and factor out a common factor. Group and group. What do they have in, in, uh, in common? They have an s squared in common. Right, so we have 3s minus 5, making sure, just double checking all the time to make sure if we distribute the s squared, we get the original thing. And then we add on the next group, that's, uh, they've got a 3 in common. 3 times s minus, uh, or that's a 3s minus 5. All right, two identical factors. They have this factor in common. Wind up with an s squared plus 3 in the other parentheses, and uh, that's it. All right. Um, so in this section where we're talking about factoring things completely, we're just throwing pretty much everything we have um, at these factoring problems. So the first thing we should always do if we're going to factor is to factor out anything that they have in common. Um, if you look at all these two terms, there's uh, an x to the fourth in common. So we should start with that. x to the fourth times x squared is x to the sixth. x to the fourth times negative four is negative four x to the fourth. Now that we've done that, we can notice we have a difference of squares. So that factors as x plus two times x minus two. The square root of x, the square root of four. Again, factor out anything they have in common. They have a 3 in common. They have a p factor in common. So we're left with 9 minus p squared. Okay, This is a square. This is a square. That's a difference. So we have a difference of squares. We're going to have 3 minus p times 3 minus p. OK, uh, so let's look at all three of these terms, see if there's anything in common. Start there. Uh, definitely got a 5. Okay, that's the biggest factor we could take out of this, so that's good. Um, they have a w squared in common as well. So we're left with w squared. 5w squared times w squared is 5w to the fourth plus 4w. 5w squared times 4w is 20w to the third plus just a 3. 5w squared times 3 is 15w squared. And this, this, out, this, this factor, this monomial factor, just keeps tagging along on the outside. And now we can factor, I think, this guy right here. Just like we uh, learned you know, before we even took the quiz, we, this, this kind of factoring was on the quiz. Uh, what multiplies the 3 and adds to 4? How about w plus 1 and w plus 3? If you multiply that out, w, w squared plus 3w plus 1w plus, one plus 3, uh, that gives us w squared plus 4w plus 3. All right. Uh, again, we should always look at all of the terms and see if there's anything that they all have in common. Um, they don't have any w factors in common. This doesn't have a w. And they almost all have a 3 factor in common, but this doesn't have a 3 factor. So there's, there's nothing there. So we just break it into two groups. And we look at the first group. What do they have in common? We've got a w squared in common. w squared times w is w to the third w squared times 3 is w, 3w squared. Okay, second group. Okay, we're, we're adding this next group. Um, what do they have in common? Well, you might say 3, but I would say uh, if you have um, a negative on your first term, then go ahead and make uh, that number that you pulled out, make it a negative. Okay, so we'll pull out a negative, uh, 9 actually, not even just 3, but 9. So we get uh, negative 9 times w. Negative 9 times w is negative 9w. Negative 9 times positive uh, 3. Negative 9 times positive 3 is negative 27. And now that we pull out a negative, we can kind of say, ignore that. Uh, we don't have to say plus a negative 9. We can say minus 9 times w plus 3. And now we've made it by factor by grouping. We've made it so that uh, those factors are identical. We get w squared minus 9 times, that might be confusing, we're going to factor out the w th plus 3 factor, w plus 3, okay, factoring it out, it's, it's a factor there, it's a factor there, 
we factor it out, we get w squared minus 9. If I distribute the w, my, w plus 3 to w squared, I get w squared times w plus 3. w plus 3 times negative 9, I get negative 9 times w plus 3. Okay, get rid of all of that stuff there. Also, now that we look at this, it is a difference of squares. So we can factor it even further. Right, that's not always going to happen. You're not always going to be able to factor that. The one we just did it wound up, uh, well, not that one. Oh, I guess I have to go way back here. See, we did a similar problem here, but this didn't turn out to be factorable, so it doesn't always happen. But this time, it did turn out to be factorable. We could factor this difference of squares. And now we're done. Once all of the variables are to the first power, there's no more factoring to be done. And this is a common factor, like a monomial factor, but you should have done that in the very beginning. OK, now we're going to be solving equations. Um, first things first. Let's see if there's anything that they have in common. Um, well they definitely have a two factor in common. Two factor. So uh, that'd be, oh, and a b too. They have a b factor in common. So that leaves us with 2b squared plus 3b plus 112 okay. equals 0. Uh, then bring this 2b factor down here, and then we find how to factor this guy here. Um, let's see. I'm going to double check. I think I might have written this down wrong. OK, so I just checked, and to be honest, I don't know where this came from. I mean, I have it written down on a piece of paper as the problem I wanted to do, but I don't know how I came up with it, and I don't know why. So I just come up with a different one, and we'll do that one but it'll be very similar. It'll be much more similar to the one you're doing. Squared plus 40b equals 0. OK, let's do this problem. Uh, again, we're going to look and see if there's anything that they all have in common. They all have a 5 and a b in common. This is a factor of 5, and this does 2. And they all have factors of b. So if you make this b squared, 5b times b squared is 5b to the third, minus 6b. 5b times 6b is 30b squared. And 5 times 8. 5b times 8 is 40b. That equals 0. 5b, OK, maybe this is factorable. It should be. If it's not factorable, we don't really have the ability, the skills right now, to solve this equation. So uh, for us, it's got to be factorable. So it's got to be b and a b. Uh, two numbers that multiply to positive and add to make negative, so that must be two negatives. Uh, two and four, two and four make eight. Uh, negative two, negative four, they add to six, yeah. We get b times b is b squared, uh, minus four b, minus two b, and minus, or plus eight. So yeah, that works. Okay, and we're multiplying, multiplying, multiplying. This times this times this equals zero. The only way to multiply things together and get zero is if you multiply by 0. You have to multiply by 0 to get 0. That's why this has to be 0. Or this would have to be 0. Or this would have to be 0. And we just say, what if this was 0? This is what b would have to be. What if this was 0? What if this was 0? And then we figure out what b is in each instance. So we divide by 5. b is still 0. Um, add 2 to both sides. Add 4 to both sides. We got the three solutions. And I think it's really just amazing if you think about it. Like You've got this equation that's equal to 0. And you're supposed to try and find uh, numbers that you can plug in for b to make it 0. And you might get 2 and 4 um, you know, just by some luck. But uh, we can use this to find actually much more complicated uh, solutions. Right? But it's still, it's kind of cool that, that we, we did this uh, process. It didn't take very long, just a few steps, and now we know that if we plug 4 in here, let's do that real quick, it'll make the equation true. So we got uh, 64 times 5, that's 320, minus 16 times 30, uh, Eight. 
180 and 160. Uh, yep, 320 plus 160 is 480, minus 480 is 0, so we found it. Also, 2 will work, and of course, 0 will work. If we put 0 in all of these, this will be 0, minus 0, plus 0. That's an easy one. Okay, here we go. Factor out the biggest common factor. That would be a z, uh, c squared. We get c squared minus 49. This is a difference of squares c squared times c plus 7 times c minus 7 equals 0. So now we have it factored. We have written it in um, factored form uh, as things multiplied together. So either this is 0, or this has to be 0, or this would have to be 0 for this equation to be true. c equals 0, c equals negative 7, c equals positive 7. And I guess that is all. Um, I think maybe just because I want to, uh, I'm going to throw in 53 here. If you, you don't have to do this problem, it's not assigned. Um, but I just thought it'd be good to throw in there 3p plus 1 equals p squared plus 3p to the third. Well, definitely when we're solving equations, quadratic equation, or a, uh, actually polynomial equations, uh, we've got to make one side zero. Uh, we'd like to write it in descending powers of uh, p. Okay, and I'd like that first thing to be positive, so how about if I do this? I subtract 3p and subtract 1 from both sides, p. Okay, and I'll write first 3p to the third plus p squared minus 3p minus 1 equals 0. Now that we have it that way, we can factor this. Uh, first, we check and see if there's anything in common among all of them. There's not. There's not a 3 in common or a p in common. So we group them. Grouping only works with even numbers of terms. right? You've got to have two groups of 2 or two groups of 3. Uh, we'll, we'll always do two groups of 2 for now. So in this first group, what do they have in common? They have a p squared in common. That's 3p plus 1. Let's see, p squared times 3p, 3p to the third. p squared times 1 is p squared. Good, we did it right. What do these have in common? Not really anything. Um, but we could take out that negative. OK, so I have it negative times positive 3p plus 1. If we were to distribute that negative, we would get negative 3p minus 1, which we have there. But now that we took the negative out, these two are identical, 3p plus 1 and 3p plus 1. So we factor that outside of the parentheses. We factor it out here, 3p plus 1 times p squared minus 1. 3p plus 1 times negative 1 is negative 3 times negative uh, times 3p plus 1 uh, equals 0. This is a difference of squares, 3p plus 1, p plus 1 p minus 1. Multiply it out yourself, you'll find you get p squared minus 1. Set each factor equal to 0. We're almost there. Minus 1 equals 0. Uh, minus 1 divided by 3, so p equals negative 1 third. p equals negative 1, p equals 1. The reason I included this one is because we get a fraction for an answer. I mean, imagine I gave you this equation to start with. I said, find the solutions to this equation. That means find the values of p that will make both sides the same. And you start plugging in uh, 1, and, and maybe you get negative 1. You're really lucky you get those 2. And I say, well, there's a third possibility. And then you try 2, and you try 3, and you try 4, and you try 5. And then you try negative 2, and negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And nothing's working. And then I tell you that the, the number you're supposed to figure out was negative 1 third. Like, there's no way that you're going to guess negative one-third. That's just silly that you would uh, come up with negative one-third. Um, it's not that crazy of a number. It's not very big. It's actually pretty small. Um, it's not wacky. It's not a crazy decimal. But it is one of the solutions. Um, and you never would have guessed it just out of the, out of the air. Uh, so that's and I know, like, I've talked about this before. It's not like we're going to 
be solving these when as we're walking you know working you know, we work at McDonald's or Walmart or uh, even a doctor or rocket scientist we're not even going to solve equations like this in that case um, even if we were in a, in a math heavy field like engineering or something like that uh, you're never going to solve a uh, polynomial equations that's this, this easy right that um, that you can just factor this way. It's, it's going to probably involve numbers that don't allow it to be factorable and we just have to use technology to solve it anyway. But that you know that that's what you're supposed to do, that, to, that that's what you're trying to solve for, you're trying to find the, the values for p that satisfy this equation, you think that's valuable, that changes your brain and uh, the idea that um, something times something times something equals zero, so I know that one of them has to be equal to zero, just that logical uh, flow of of thought, uh, that's what's the most valuable. That learning math, algebra, or whatever level, um, it hopefully it's helping you learn how to think about a problem and how you're supposed to solve it. Um, anyway, I'm done now. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful. Let me know if there's anything else I can do.